everybody. Welcome back. Steve from the Pinball Room. Thanks for joining. Okay, short one today. Just want to kind of get you caught up on some of the other things I was chipping away at while I was being cursed by the CNC gods and all that was being so frustrating. So I didn't sit around idle. I went through and was like, all right, here's another cleanup I need to be doing while I'm here. Um, the subway, the way things are setting up, I need to make sure I actually had, had a switch detecting when it entered the subway versus just having one sitting at the buck because I need to know how the ball came to the buck, right? So I went ahead and I did this little bit of work. So I reprinted out the subway. And now what it has here on the side are these two little, maybe you see it better over here <laughs> with the background. These two little, uh, two little holders that allow me to, allow me to take, maybe we got a better background over here, one of the opto sensors and I can drop it down inside. Oop. And it just kind of sits inside there. And then this, I'm not sure how well you can see, there's like little little slots, there you go, that are in there, okay? And so that way, I'm able to mount this right in the right position, at the right place, how well you can see that. And then it just, just slides on in that groove, and then the wires will come out below in the back right there, and come down and be routed. So add an opto to the subway, so we know when the ball enters that um, from that entrance. And then the staircase. Remember the staircase, one of the big issues we had was you get to the top of the staircase, the ball is going to the play field, and they can be coming, they can come right back onto, uh, onto the staircase and get stuck on top. So I went through and I found a one-way ball gate and reprinted out, added a little bit more plastic here, some screw holes, and added the ability to have a, a one-way ball gate at the top. So the balls can come out, um, can come out, but they cannot go back in that way. Okay, so we did that. Other thing we tested, um, I'm not sure how well you can see this. One of the other things I did here was I went through and practiced adding in a piece of acrylic here above this drop target to see about how long I needed it to be to be able to make sure the ball um, isn't ricocheting and um, bouncing right back into your face and on top of the glass or anything. And to, these, to those dots there is all I really ended up needing. So I don't even need a piece of that big. I also went through, I don't have it right here, but I practiced getting some spacers here, standoffs, another clear, clear piece of acrylic. So we have a shield, so in case the ball ricochets anywhere else from the play field and hops onto the stairs, which it happened early in playtesting. It hasn't happened in a while. So I'll, I'll kind of wait to put it on in case it starts happening again, but if so, we've already got the right spacers set up to where you can screw in some spacers and then have a piece of plastic, a shield in front of this to protect the balls so nothing jumps in without the sensors actually knowing what's going on there. Okay, so that was taken care of also. Panning back out, we also have, we got new speakers here. So, um, after a couple of you pointed out, because I'm not an audio guy either, that the speakers I have were just like the, just like the single uh, mid-range. They didn't have this, it's called coaxial. Yeah, so these are DS18, not really know that brand. They got pretty good reviews. Um, coaxial speakers can handle like 135 watts max. Um, anyway, some two-way speakers, right? There's some nice two-way speakers. And that way I should hopefully get a little bit better range in the music coming out of those. But these are a little bit thicker profile. And so I had to go through and recreate um, the little brackets I had to hold them to be deeper, to be able to give them room so they're not being smashed against the grill and not being able to, to actuate. So we'll print out some new ones of these. Also have, have these updated and tweaked a little bit to allow for the, plexig uh, the plexiglass or acrylic that I bought off Pinball Life. This is one that's a replacement for your Stern um, spike machines. And I decided to go ahead and just get it um, because I was kind of out of out of plastic and it was I was already making an order. This is already set to the right, right exactly the right size for this frame. It has a hole for the um, for the lock and everything. Fits in there nice. So I up, updated these to make sure that they will fit around that nice and snug and hold the speaker in place. And it's also going to hold my LCD display in place, nice and snug inside of it. Okay. So yeah, that's uh. Quick and dirty, but I wanted to let you know some of the other things that I was I was I wasn't completely just twiddling my thumbs or pouting about the CNC gods being mean to me. All right, we got a few other things taken care of. So, yeah, small little things like that, but I mean they're important. They're gonna impact how the game plays quite a bit and how it sounds. So, there you go. All right. So I hope you guys are having great fun with your projects. Also, I love what we're seeing. It's, is it me or are there more home brewers now? Sharing their projects in in the last couple of years. It seems like it's really kind of kicked up a notch. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I'm just I'm paying attention more now since I'm in the realm also. But I think there's a lot of people with some really awesome projects going on. So it's man, I'm excited for Expo and yeah, there's just a lot of good things going on out there, guys. So 
Keep up the work, everybody. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.